Let's take another look at U.S. firearms laws, this time from the perspective of a lawmaker, William J. Hughes. Now, you may or may not be familiar with his name, but you're probably familiar with the legislation he's responsible for. Of course, this is all done for educational purposes. We always encourage you to do your own research. Hughes was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives for New Jersey's 2nd District. He was born in 1932, graduated high school in 1950. By 1959, he had passed the bar, and from 1960 to 70, he was a first assistant prosecutor for a county in New Jersey. Then in 1975, he began a 20-year run on the U.S. House of Representatives, again for the state of New Jersey, as a Democrat. From 1981 through 1990, he chaired the Subcommittee on Crime, and that's what we'll be focusing on. He then became the ambassador to Panama and received lots of honorary degrees. He's definitely got a lot of political capital. He's been a politician his whole life. And the reason we show his biography here is to give you an idea of his experiences and his frame of reference. He's basically been a student, then a prosecuting attorney, then a representative. He's definitely been responsible for a lot of firearms legislation. Let's take a look at that nine-year stint from 1981 through 1990 when he was the chair of the subcommittee. First, the subcommittee has jurisdiction over all federal firearms laws, as well as the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which, of course, is there to enforce those laws. So as the chair of that subcommittee, he was responsible for five major acts of firearms legislation. Now, on the surface, they all look like they're done with good intention, but let's take a closer look at those. Uh, we'll do these actually in other videos, but let's take a quick look at each of them now. First, the Armed Career Criminals Act of 1984 basically created minimum sentences and fines uh, for certain felonies when used with a firearm. Next, the Law Enforcement Officers Protection Act of 95 basically prohibited the manufacture, importation, and sale of ammunition designed to go through soft armor. The Career Criminals Amendments Act uh, again added a mandatory sentence for other felonies with a firearm. And then the Firearms Owners Protection Act of 1986 included the Hughes Amendment, which Hughes is, of course, infamous for. The Hughes Amendment was tacked on to the end of the uh, voting, and as you can see in the video, live video that's available now online, uh, it was definitely passed incorrectly, out of order, and should never have been put into law. So this is why Hughes will always be infamous with firearms owners. And again, the Hughes Amendment, uh, prohibited the private possession of full auto machine guns uh, to, that were created after 1986. And again, that's something that we still all live with to this day. Finally, the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1990, uh, 1988, which is something we did a video on recently, prohibited any firearm which wasn't detectable through metal detectors or x-ray machines. Again, a, a law in science fiction, basically. Uh, then uh, Hughes uh, later uh, uh, founded the Center for Public Policy in New Jersey, and in 1996, the Federal Aviation Administration's Technical Center in New Jersey was named after him. Now, why do we take the time to take a look at uh, Hughes and the laws that he's uh, responsible for? He's a person that doesn't believe full auto machine guns uh, have a purpose, and he's respons he was responsible for nine years for our federal firearms laws, and he's unfortunately responsible for uh, some unfortunate legislation, uh, depending on which one you're looking at and who you talk to. So let's talk again about the laws that he's responsible for. Now, again, on the surface, mandatory sentences, you know, are a good thing. However, are they effective? Are they necessary? And we can take a look at all kinds of crimes uh, that, that have mandatory minimums and whether or not they're effective and necessary. But that's probably the uh, topic for a whole other video. So let's take a look at the violence point and the, the laws that he passed that specifically pick out the firearm in violent crime. Why would the device used to commit violence require more or less punishment? In other words, if you committed violence with a feather duster, would it require less punishment than violence done with a firearm? And I don't think people pay attention enough to that facet of this because typically the most reprehensible and most wicked violence is given the longest sentences or the largest fines. So when they equate the most reprehensible and the most wicked violence with firearms, they're basically persecuting firearms or firearms owners, either intentionally or unintentionally. So this is either a deliberate attempt to demonize the firearm or the firearm owner or the person who has the mindset to use a firearm in defense, or it's completely unintentional. But either way, I suggest that they're causing the same amount of damage overall to the country. 
I put a video up like this because I think it's our point it's our job to question the lawmakers as well as the laws that they're responsible for. I think we need to question the need for more laws. Few laws give us a nice framework we can all work well in society. The more laws we give, the more places we give for criminals to hide. We have some links here to the places we use to research this video. We always encourage you to support the organizations that support our freedom. We post information like this on our websites. We always thank you for your support. And as always, thanks for watching.